Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome to In The Headlines where we will shortly be discussing the central papers and magazines of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. And to discuss this with me here today is uh, Ahsan Maksud who is serving at Al Fazl International. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa and uh, Sabahat Ali Sahib uh, serving at the Review of Religions. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah for coming down. And of course, uh, Mansoor Ahmed Clark who is a missionary serving at the Press Office International. Uh, Jazakallah guys for coming down. We're going to start off with Al Fazl. And of course, we all know that His Holiness Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmed uh, recently uh, delivered a keynote address at the annual peace symposium hosted by the Ahmadiyya Muslim community here at home in the United Kingdom, talking about so many different pressing issues, whether it was to do with issues here at home, whether it was to do with immigration, whether it was to do with the threat of a global war. And now Al Fazil has actually managed to translate that address into the Urdu language for the Urdu viewers. Of course, that's something really interesting to look forward to, isn't it? Yes, Kamar Sahib, Dhaakallah. Um, Al Fazl International has the privilege of publishing Hazur Anwar's sermons and addresses in the Urdu language. And as you have just mentioned in this issue, Hazur Anwar's keynote address at the Peace Symposium is being published, which was an eye opener for the whole world if they're serious about establishing peace. And with regards to the translations, what is the process? I mean, of course, it can be a very arduous and difficult task at times. So, how is that translation taken upon and how is it achieved? Uh, we have a quite a big team of uh, translation. Uh, there's different people who translate and after that it uh, it's being re reviewed by a lot of people as well. Okay, it's really interesting to know. And of course, um, we here right now are sitting in MTA International Studios here in the United Kingdom. But there has been news of a new MTA setup in another part of the world. What's that all about? Uh, yes, there's a very pleasing news from Suriname that by the grace of Allah, MTA has now started coming through their national um, cable TV, so our brothers there in Suriname will be able to benefit from MTA without any difficulty. Alhamdulillah. Absolutely. That is of course really interesting. Anything else that you guys have in Al Fazl for this week? Uh, yes, we have an introduction to the book Zuratul Imam, uh, The Need for the Imam. Uh, this book was written by the Promised Messiah, Wasalam, and um, <clears throat> in that book, Hazur talked about the high status of the Imam of the Age and what his distinctive features are, and also the distinctive features of true revelation. And Hazur also claimed that uh, God Almighty has fulfilled all these signs in his person, and that he is the Imam of the age. So Zirud al-Imam and this book, are, of course, has been translated into English as well, The Need for the Imam, which you can catch both the English and Urdu edition on alislam.org. Uh, we're going to now carry on to the review of religions. And we don't have an edition here to talk about now, but we have some really interesting news, some upcoming research, which may change the history of Jesus, peace be upon him, as we know it. What is that all about? Zakalakam Rasaib, I'm extremely excited and uh, equally humbled. Uh, we were talking earlier about this as well. and. Uh, we as uh, Ahmadi Muslims uh, know that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did not uh, die on the cross. He survived the crucifixion and subsequently traveled east. But if you look into actual academic circles, while this theory is discussed, firstly, you'd be hard pressed to find very much about it. Secondly, it is very seldom ever attributed to the promised Messiah who was actually the scholastic pioneer of this research. Uh, in his magnum opus, Jesus in India. And so when we looked into it, we became quite worried. Uh, we brought this, uh, we didn't bring it to the attention of Khalif al-Masih, of course, but we humbly submitted it before Hazur Anwar, this uh, query that, that we had. Um, and he was absolutely tranquil and calm. And he said, we have all of the facts. The information is indubitable. Um, we just need to collate it, collect it, uh, and so uh, I'm very humbled and honored to announce that by Allah Ta'ala's grace, uh, the Review of Religions is launching an international uh, research hub uh, where the Review from London will be subletting archaeologists, um, historians, geneticists, and people in all different fields, and has all, this work has already started, to substantiate and further this research. We've already started receiving uh, information from missionaries, from experts from around the world, who were already conducting research to this end in their circles, and now all of this will be holistically done. One thing I'd like to add is when Sayyidina Hazrat Khalif al Masih May Allah be his helper when we brought this to him. Uh, he himself went and uh, presented several texts to us and he had already done his research. 
And so it was with his blessed hands that this research commenced, and that's why we're excited uh, that we'll, we'll be able to carry this forward, inshallah. I mean, it's really interesting because the Review of Religions, uh, every year at the annual convention in, at the UK, has held the Turin Shard exhibition, which has yeah. brought in a lot of interest. Uh, I think this is another project which is historical. It's, it has a lot of interest. People would want to contribute towards this. You spoke about archaeologists and other, other uh, you know, fields of profession. If they want to help, how can they actually do that? Uh, Jazakallah, that's extremely important. If anybody wants to help, and we invite this research under the, the guidance of our beloved Imam Khalif al Musil Khamis, may Allah uh, strengthen his hands, be his helper. Um, and that is at review, uh, sorry, research at reviewofreligions.org. And uh, I would like to very humbly add that um, when it comes to this project, <coughs> it is uh, our objective is to fill academic circles, journals, uh, and uh, books with the truth of what happened. Mm. Uh, and so a humble request that everyone keeps us I in mean, your prayers. Mansoor, it's really interesting because you do find a lot of people, especially online on social media platforms, it's a topic which isn't mm. just topical to Islam, but Christianity and, and many other religions about Jesus, peace be upon him. What yeah. actually happened to him? And you know about this <coughs> yourself as well, don't you? A lot of people are talking about this. I mean, it's crucial to understand the history of where our religions come from and where our beliefs come from. I think we're in an age now where we are able to critique everything that we believe in. I think it's important for us to understand the history behind that and indeed the science behind that as well in order to come to informed decisions about what we believe in. Absolutely, and we can look and hope to see some sort of publication about this in the near future about uh, this topic. Uh, you can check that out on reviewofreligions.org as well. And we're going to move on quickly now to the Al Hakam. Uh, newspaper. A couple of interesting articles here. The main article uh, has been titled Democracy in Question, Losing Hope in Old Politicians. I mean, of course, I think the title speaks for itself. Uh, if you want to catch this, of course, you can check this out on alhakam.org. And of course, this week in history also mentions something about democracy, but to, to do with the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. And that is uh, in 1928, where we had the first ever central committee formed to do with Shura. Uh, which is again a sort of a democratical uh, committee where people come together and make decisions. And I think it's worth taking a look. The very first thing which was decided upon is something to do with women's rights. So do take a look at that as well. And many other interesting things such as uh, an audience of young youth uh, who met His Holiness Hazrat Mirza Masri Ahmed, the worldwide head of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. Many of those youth had never actually met His Holiness before and they had many different questions to ask. Some of them asked about the current political situation. Some of them asked why His Holiness decided to move to the United Kingdom as opposed to anywhere else around the world. And many more different questions which you can catch, of course, on alhakam.org. Uh, we're now going to move to the last article here, which has actually been published by BBC News. And they're talking about one character who's been on the news uh, under the interest of the, of the media for a long time now, and that is Tommy Robinson, or the name that he goes by. Mm. Um, talking about how restrictions had been placed upon his YouTube account. Yeah. And they're trying to make it more difficult for not only him, but people who have the same type of agenda as him mm -hmm. to, be, to be able to voice things. And my question to you, Mansoor, before anything else is, would, would not such people argue that these kinds of restrictions are an attack on their freedom of speech? I think there's a, there's a, a two pronged answer to this. First of all, let's not make any you know, excuses for this person. This, this individual, indeed many other people like them, not specifically mentioning him, they are given a huge platform on, in the media, on the papers, on broadcasts. So their message is already going around the entire world. That's a different debate though. In regards to this specifically, the fact of the matter is that they're using the concept of the freedom of expression as the basis of their argument. Right. In reality, when we look at the history, freedom of expression was there to ensure the truth and morality of a situation becomes apparent to everyone. Unfortunately, in today's day and age, it seems that the value of an opinion seems to be more than the value of fact. When an individual is using that same platform to say negative things and to promote, I would call them alternative truths, but I think that's a, that's a loose term, lies in many, in many situations. I think that's a situation where we need to look very carefully okay. at if that person has the right to express those opinions. You speak about morals and mm -hmm. you speak about how freedom of speech has been established to, to inculcate that into society. And sometimes we see people are using hate speech to get the, the message across. Yeah. But again, I, I would ask, where do we draw the line between free speech and good moral speech and hate speech? So the freedom of expression and the way that we have free speech, I mean, I can say that, I mean, 
uh, I love Man United. I don't, but I can say that I love Man United, for example, or I can say that you know I don't like chocolate. I do. <laughs> so, uh, but I can express my beliefs when they're not right. hurting someone else's feelings. The moment that someone goes on on a public platform and starts saying things like you know, things that are racist or xenophobic right. or uh, anti women or uh, in, in that regard, or if they're inciting hatred, they're inciting violence. These things are starting to rip the fabric of our society. In that situation, the welfare and the well-being of society must be given more importance than the hateful, unfortunately sometimes, the hateful and violent opinions of certain individuals. And what do you think about this, about? So I mean, there's a lot of debate out there and people actually support debate and they say it's a good idea. We do see that sometimes this, whether directly or indirectly, does promote violence. And for that reason, do you think there should be sanctions placed against some such type of speech? I think that I'm reminded of John Stuart Mill on liberty, as Mansur Saib would tell better than anyone. Um, I mean, that work for, formed the framework, the, the uh, epistructure of uh, all international modern constitutions. And in it, uh, Mill himself pointed out that the freedom of speech is only there up until it is conducive to and demonstrative of peace in society and progress, where whithersoever and whensoever and howsoever, uh, this becomes an obstruction, meaning f the use of freedom of speech, which by the way, he also in the same document calls a responsibility, mm -hmm. I might add equally, um, when that becomes non-conducive and counter-pedagogical to peace, at that time the government has to step in. And so that's why we have to look at these uh, ideals of democracy and freedom in context. It's very interesting, you, uh, the Human Rights yeah. UN de Declaration, they all actually have these laws put in place already mm -hmm. um, and stop something which is actually new. And His Holiness, uh, Hazrat Mirza Masri Ahmed, has actually been reminding the world about this. Mm -hmm. I mean, what are the kinds of things that he has time and time again been <coughs> talking about? So I think two things very much stand out for me. One is I remember sitting in one of the Friday sermons and His Holiness talked about this issue. I mean, the issues have been numerous. We talked about Charlie Hebdo, the attacks that happened there, the, uh, the Innocence of Muslims film that came out, the caricatures of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of God be upon him. But His Holiness, at one point, uh, he quoted the Pope, and the Pope very famously, and this is uh, covered in many papers and many uh, uh, branches of the media, he very famously said, if a friend of mine even was to insult my mother, he would, to, he would be expected to receive a punch in the face. And he said this would be normal. I think that's a very important thing to keep in mind. Second to this as well also is the uh, one thing that always stands out for me. And His Holiness said that we should not be so arrogant and so proud mm -hmm. as to think that the laws and regulations made by man are infallible. Mm -hmm. We have seen many a time that they contain flaws and they need to be amended later on. It would be a huge error for us. This again, these are the paraphrasing of the words of the Caliph. It would be a huge error for us to make the freedom of expression paramount at the expense of societal peace mm. and global peace. I think that's a very, very important thing for us to remember. Of course, peace is the fundamental crux of this whole matter. al Hakam mentioned it, uh, Al-Fazl, you've talk, spoken about it in the Peace Symposium. And this is really what we are here trying to establish. And Jazakallah, uh, gentlemen, for coming down to discuss this with me here today. And unfortunately, that is all we have time for. But of course, you can catch up with all of these papers uh, online. Uh, for Al-Hakam, it's alhakam.org. For Al-Fazl, alfazl.org. And for a review of religions, it's reviewofreligions.org. And of course, if you want to submit the research, it's research at reviewofreligions.org. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and peace be upon you all.